48 easy ways to green your kitchen. Still ahead on Good Morning Connecticut, we'll talk with Annalise Paik, the founder of the Fairfield Green Food Guide, on how to get started greening your kitchen. Stay with us. minutes before 8 o'clock. If one of your New Year's resolutions was to lower your carbon footprint, well, congratulations. The kitchen is one of the best places to start. It's where you can reduce, reuse, and recycle, and even compost. And here to tell us more and to show us how to get started is Annalise Paik. She is the founder of the Fairfield Green Food Guide. Thanks for coming in again. It's my pleasure. Good morning. And, and what an array of things you brought in here. And this is all for the kitchen, right? It's all for the kitchen. We have a tremendous opportunity in the kitchen. We eat three times a day. If we have kids, the kids are snacking. So when we purchase our food, store our food, the way we eat it, uh, the way we transport it, how far it's traveled to get to our table, all these things are taken into consideration. One of the easiest things is to not waste food. Okay. By some standards, 40% uh, of the food that's created in this country is never eaten. No kidding. And that's from farm to plate all along the food chain. So what we can do in our own homes is thou to eat it or freeze it. And these are wonderful storage containers that we can do that with because they go from the refrigerator to the freezer to the oven. And, and when they're glass like that, it's easier to look in the refrigerator and actually see what you have. And I there's find probably that. a better chance that the food will get eaten rather than thrown away. Absolutely. And then to, to add to that, have a once a week clean out the refrigerator night. We literally empty it out on the counter and have leftovers yeah, that night. That makes cooking easy, at least for one night. Easier on whoever cooks. Yeah, yeah. The second thing is to keep things out of the waste stream that are recyclable. Many okay. people don't know that number fives are recyclable. Number five. I always thought it was just one and two. Yogurt. Okay. Peanut butter caps, cream cheese, pill bottles, and also cork. Corks. Cork. Who Whole knew? Foods. Whole Foods, even if you don't shop there. Okay. Just have your own little dedicated bag. Bring your corks in, they'll recycle them. They have a little facility in the front of the store. Oh, that's in great and to out, know. Real okay. quick. The next one is to use recycled products. So right. instead of um, using virgin paper products, you can use recycled napkins, recycled paper towels, that makes even sense. recycled aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. Aluminum foil, which is a precious resource, obviously. In aluminum processing, really, there's there's a heavy toll on the environment. Absolutely. So that's a, that's a great idea. You're digging up the earth to create it and creating a lot of waste. Right. The other one is to use um, bags that are compostable okay. in your kitchen garbage because plastic bags take hundreds of years to break down. Right. And then the last one would be to use eco-friendly products like this phosphate-free dish liquid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, in 16 states in the U.S., uh, phosphates have been banned from the dishwasher soap, but not Connecticut. Oh, well, I'd imagine still these would be pretty easy to find in most They are very easy to find. Okay. And then we're talking about keeping things out of the waste stream that, that don't have to go in there, like the recyclables. Another one is your food waste. Right. So you take your, your scraps from your vegetables and okay. your fruits, you spend coffee grounds and tea bags, your eggshells, accumulate them in here, dump them in a pile with some leaves and grass, and guess what? You create your own compost, and so you're with, saving money. With the right pail, it won't smell, right? It will not smell. I have never had a problem with this. The only time it's going to smell is when it's actually decomposing, and that would be outside. And the reason why you don't want this in the waste stream is that instead of decomposing and turning into compost, which we would have to spend money on, mm -hmm. it would go in a landfill and create methane gases. True which is a greenhouse gas. It all comes full circle. It does. Simple it does. and easy tips. I'm sorry we're out of time, but you know what? You've informed us on a lot. Okay, wonderful. We can start in the kitchen. Annalise Pick from the Fairfield Green Food Guide offering us some invaluable tips this morning on how you can reduce your carbon footprint. If you want more information, go to our website, WTNH.com. Click on the Good Morning Connecticut Weekend section. Still to come, we're going to talk about what you're talking about in Participate. Stay with us.